What's up YouTube land? This is Steve with Vast Motorsports. In today's video, I wasn't even going to bother making one because there's so many of them online already. But I just happened to find a little something here that I wanted to point out. I am working on a 08 Avalanche that I picked up for a good deal. And uh, I call it a good deal. She's nice and straight. Got good paint. I don't see any body damage or anything on it. I have a little something on the bumper there, uh, maybe on the back. But overall, it drives real nice, but the motor is making some pretty bad noise. Started out lifter ticking, the collapsed uh, AOD lifters, of course. And I wound up taking it for a little ride yesterday. I finally got it back from Florida. I trailered it here. That's where I bought it. And I got it back here and decided I was going to take it for a little ride yesterday when I unloaded it from the trailer and just checked the trans and the drivetrain out, make sure everything was worth putting money into the engine. And I got on it a little bit and it started to possibly knock. I don't know. It's pretty doggone scary. So instead of just ordering the kit like I was going to and getting the cam kit and going into it and doing it right, I'm going to do the cam and lifters. Pull the heads to do everything, do the new head gaskets, have the heads uh, cleaned up, machined while they're off. But now that I heard the engine knock, I'm going to go ahead and do the little band-aid trick. I'm going to pull the valve covers off and take the intake off. I've got an old push rod out of one of my boat engines that I'm going to use as a tool like some of the guys are making. And I'm going to stick it right down the little hole there, the oil galley. Um, on the lifter, I know number one definitely has a lot of misfires showing in the computer, but it sounds like it's both sides and it is skipping really bad. So we're going to go ahead and get these valve covers off. I'm going to check the rocker arms and see which ones are loose. Maybe spin the motor over. I'll probably hook up my remote uh, starter button into the box here so I can be out here watching as I'm spinning it over. And but. The reason I started to make this video is because I found this. Uh, again, tearing this stuff down is pretty self-explanatory. Um, and you can watch one of the other more detailed videos. But what I found while I'm undoing everything, I want to see. Yeah, you can see it. That is a kink in the fuel line. And I would imagine somebody's probably worked on this motor a time or two in its past. But I don't really see where anything is bent, like, of course not on the fuel rail. But where the line comes up off the chassis back here, I guess I'm going to have to push it backwards and bend it. But that's the main fuel lead coming in. And what's crazy is the thing was running fine as far as fuel pressure and all. But uh, that's not the issue, but I'll be doggone, that's the type of thing that will leave you stranded somewhere and saying, oh man, what's wrong? But anyway, that is the fuel line kinked. So that's something you might want to check on your vehicle, just for the heck of it. Any Silverado or Avalanche or Tahoe, Suburban, any of those, Denali's. You might want to take a look at that, just for the heck of it. And see what kind of condition that line is in. Uh, because again, it will leave you stranded somewhere, and that's just such a simple fix. You don't want to be stuck on the highway or something somewhere, or, or even anywhere, for that matter. But I guess since I've started the video, just stick around and uh, I'll show you when I get the valve covers off and check the rockers. All right, I went ahead and popped off the driver's side and on the number one cylinder, the exhaust valve is just, she's a floppy. None of the others are loose right now, but that's just the first obvious step. I need to go ahead and get the other valve cover off the other side. And then, like I said, I'll probably hook my little remote up in here and just spin the motor over so I can watch the rest of the rockers. And uh, let's see what we got. All right, so I went ahead and pulled the passenger side, and I can see number four cylinder here. I got two of them with some play, so those lifters are in bad shape too. I don't know if they're fully collapsed, but they are definitely... Uh, in a bad state of <laughs> despair. So anyway, I feel like uh, I don't want to say I got hosed or anything by the dealer because, you know, obviously somebody has worked on it. 
I don't know if it was them or if it was, you know, he told me it was traded in that way. When I went to pull the dipstick out, I noticed the tube is all loose. Somebody had to bolt out the uh, valve cover when I was taking the coil. Hold downs off. Two of them were loose, finger tight. So the other driver's side valve cover had some orange sealer on it where they stuck the valve cover gasket back into the valve cover. And so anyway, somebody's been messing with it. But that's all right. I'm still under 5G's and I haven't bought any parts yet. But like I said, with tax and everything, I paid 48 for it. I think I'm all right. It's not the normal Stevo deal. I usually like to say I steal stuff. But at the same time, it is a very clean one. Everything I've been looking at on the market like this is 8 to 10 grand. And even if they're all right at that moment, the thing is, I knew I would have to do this work to it anyway. These are just prone for it. So at least this way, I'm saving myself the extra few thousand dollars because I'll have a few hundred in parts unless I have to replace the motor. And then I'm probably around a grand for the motor itself and then some gaskets and whatever to switch everything over. And the good thing is I do all the work myself. I don't pay anybody to do anything. So it's a... I guess we'll just have to find out if it turns out being a good deal or not. But at least when I'm done, I know I will have a good, reliable motor. But again, for right now, I'm just going to try to do the quickie, uh, just a Band-Aid on the lifters, just to hear it run again, maybe drive it up and down the road, make sure that the bottom end of the motor is all right. I have driven it, and the vehicle drives very nice. All the other accessories work. And there's no weird noises anywhere else except for the ticking and possible knock that's in the motor. So I think I'm all right. Even the cooling system and all was full and everything looks good and clean. And, uh, nothing was trying to overheat or leak or anything when I drove it. So I guess we'll just have to see. All right, went ahead and lifted the intake out. It's very simple to get off. And uh, now it's time to unplug the oil pressure sensor back there and the little VLOM uh, for the solenoids and go ahead and start on doing these bolts. Let's get this uh, valley cover off. All right, so I got the VLOM plate off with the solenoids. And if I have to guess, now the vehicle does have 214 on it, even though it's in really nice shape. To me, that doesn't matter because I've seen them mess up with 100,000 on them. I've seen vehicles with 100,000 on them that I wouldn't even own because they're in such bad shape. I've seen vehicles with 200 and something on them. Heck, my dually has 350 on it, and I love it. I drive it to Florida all the time, 600-mile trips each way. And uh, so that really doesn't bother me. But if I had to guess, I'm going to say the problem with it was, is these gaskets are completely flat. And see, this is where the oil pressure comes through these solenoids and through these into the towers down to the lifter. And they're completely flat. And when I took the bolts out, all the bolts were nice and tight. But when I took them out, all I did was touched it. And it just came right loose. It was not stuck at all. Like even the valve covers, I had to take a hammer and tap them, you know, to, to get them broke loose. And then they'll come off. The rubber gasket's still nice on them. Uh, this one, like I said, is completely flat. I can't even feel the gasket ridge. And it pretty much, as soon as I took the bolts out, it just slid. So that's telling me... The oil pressure was leaking down, even though the motor had good oil pressure, even with it ticking and running the way it was, it was still over 40 the whole time, even at idle. And of course, it would go up around the 50 or so range when you'd rev it. So I'm guessing that's probably the culprit to what caused this in the first place, is those uh, gaskets leaking the oil that's going down into the towers for the lifters. All right. Well, I mean, that's kind of a good sign. I can see I got the cam, the lobe up. I don't know how good you can see it on the camera here because the glare and stuff, but I really don't see any damage to the lobe. I know that glare is bright, but I can see it with my eyes pretty good, and I don't see any wear. 
at least not excessive or that's going to cause any problem. So that lobe still looks very nice. That's a good sign. And I can almost see through to the other. No, I can't really see that. I was going to say I could see the next set of lifters, but I can't. They're all the way over. All right. Well, let me see if I can get this one freed up. I'm just going to take an old push rod out of uh, one of the boat motors. Let's see if that thing fits the hole or not. Uh, nope, it does not. All right, so I'm going to have to find something better to get down in there and try to get those lifters freed up. Let me see what I can come up with. All right, well, I got a old chisel here, or a punch, and it's kind of smaller at the end here. Uh, probably a little too skinny, so I'm going to grind it just a hair right here and go ahead and put uh, like an angle to it so it sits against the lifter nice and doesn't put a big indention in the side of the lifter. This screwdriver here, I've seen people use Phillips online before on some of the videos, but I think hitting a plastic handle isn't going to do much good, and I definitely don't want this sharp point. Messing up the lifter because when I do go to change them, I want the lifter to come out of the board. I don't want to scar the side of it up to where it doesn't come out of the lifter board in the engine block. So I already measured, and I think I'll be good. I'm going to go a little farther with it, and uh, I'm just going to ground this area down to get it about the size of this. So that won't be hard to do on my grinder over there. And then, like I said, put a little... Uh, angle to it over here to where when I drop it in I'll be able to feel it and make sure it's seated nicely and uh, we'll see how that works. Alright so I went ahead and uh, ground down this area from here to here. This is still nice and smooth and it fits in there good. I put a little beveled end on it. Probably can't see the camera's not wanting to focus too good. The uh, phone camera. But it's got plenty of room. It's not touching anywhere. So I think we're going to give this tool a try. And at least it's a good, uh, some type of hardened punch, kind of, to where it should give a good shock, transfer the shock into the actual lifter. I do want to make sure that my beveled edge is facing the right direction. should be about like that. And kind of feel, giving it a turn, that should be good. Now I've got the cam lobe on the high side. Matter of fact, I need to back it up just a little bit. I want the lifter all the way up. That way I know I'm not hitting that little oil hole uh, like the crazed and performance guy or whatever is showing on all his videos. So, let's see. Sorry if I got the name wrong there. It's kind of hard to do one-handed. I'm going to have to put the phone down, but here we go. Alright, so that is the high side of the globe. Alright, I guess I'm going to undo the rocker. I'm not 100% sure why everybody takes the rocker arm off and lets the push rod just fly out. But... Since that's what everybody's doing these days, I guess I'll try it. Because to me, with all that slop, it seems like if it's going to pop, it would pop. But I guess we want the lifter plunger mechanism to come all the way out and release. That might catch it and stop it in the wrong spot, especially now that the lobe is up. Yeah, I guess I do understand. If the cam lobe's up, that means the rocker would be pushed down. So the lifter, the internals are not going to go far enough. So let me get that rocker off. All right, so I wanted to add a little quick note that I did because I was using the punch deal last night trying to tap on with the hammer. And I don't have the best pace, patience in the world. And after about 20 minutes or so, I said the hell with it. Because I'm not going to sit there beating on it all day. And I don't want to destroy the lifter to where later on when I go to replace them, it doesn't come out the lifter bore. So for some odd reason, I had the idea in my mind, because I've seen old crazed performance videos, 
where he'll have the lifter out laying on the floor after he's already removed them and he wants to show you how they operate so he takes the air nozzle and he sticks it on the little oil hole on the side of the lifter and gives it a little and the lifter just pops automatically comes you know resets so i got the bright idea why not just put the air straight down the port here instead of beating on it and i'll be doggone today when i came out this was the real bad rocker right here the uh what is that that's the exhaust valve and i mean it was flopping so anyway the rocker was off push rod was in the hole i hit it like this with the air and i seen the push rod boop, out onto the ground and i said oh, i can't believe it that worked that easy so I put the rocker back on, and it seems to be good. It has a little play now. I'm hoping that the lifter just pumps up when it gets some hydraulic pressure. Because, I mean, it was flopping. It was totally uh, uh, sunk and stuck. And then these two over here on number four, they had a lot of play on them, but not as excessive as this one over here. But they were definitely, you could rock them pretty bad. Same thing, I started out with the chisel just to see the punch. No luck at all. So I sprayed some brake clean down in there, put the air to it, and boop, seen the push rods. They popped out onto the ground. Put it back in, rotated it, and now that one, very little, if any, movement. Same with this one. These two were pretty bad. And both of them, the air trick worked. So definitely save yourself some time and headache. If you have a good compressor and you got an air nozzle with a little rubber tip, give that a try. Spray brake clean in there, fill it up, and just give it a good and see if your push rod jumps out. If it doesn't do it right off the bat, maybe take the tool or, or a piece of metal like that and tap on it a few times just to see if that helps unlodge and then take the air. I'm telling you, I hit this one so many times, too. I spent minutes steady sitting there tapping, easy, hard. It did not matter. I was so tired of doing it. And then the air just made it pop. And I thought to myself, why the heck didn't I try that before? Why ain't anybody else on YouTube doing that? So there goes a new Vast Motorsports trick for you with your 5.3. All right. Well, it is time to see if my air release on the lifter, AFM lifters, trick works. Now, again, I don't know those lifters could be too damaged because I have no idea how long the engine was ran that way. And I really don't know. We're just going to have to start it and find out. I put everything back together. One good thing I do like about these engines, I'll bet I don't have 30 or 40 minutes in putting everything back together and we're ready to fire it up. So let's give it a try and see what happens. I don't remember if the key is in it or not. Yeah. Prime the fuel once or twice because I took the intake and turned it over and drained all the fuel out because I didn't want to keep making a mess. All right, she is ticking. I'm going to give it a minute and see if they'll pump up or anything. Doesn't seem to be skipping like it was. Yeah, she's still noisy. It does have a little skip to it. Oh yeah, she sounds like junk. She is pretty rough. Now I went ahead and unplugged the booster over here because I was told it won't go into four cylinder mode. I've read that and seen it in some videos. I don't know if that's true, but I'm not sure. Like I said, those lifters could be so bad. The main reason I was even wasting my time doing this band-aid was because I just wanted to hear it run, maybe get to drive it down the street again, and see if the motor itself's actually knocking before I go through all the time and trouble of pulling the uh, 
heads and putting the lifters and all in it. She's not sounding good. Yeah, see, I hear something. That's bad. I don't know that that would just be a lifter that was making that kind of noise. That was pretty loud. Maybe I'll uh, try to drive down the street and see what happens, but we're going to call this one a fail. The air trick did work on getting the lifter to release, but the lifter's probably already in too bad a shape. Now, like I said, the cam lobe did appear to be okay, so I guess we'll just have to tear into this motor and see because I called around this morning. This is February of 23, and now motors in the junkyard are 2,000 and up. I really don't want to spend that, so guess we'll be tearing into it. All right, well, thanks for checking us out on this Fast Motorsports video, and we'll see you on the next one.